Hi, and welcome to this video of Dynamics 365 talk, where I'll be discussing how you can set up a mailbox for automatic case creation in a unified interface. But before we get started, let me introduce myself. My name is Dion Taylor. I'm a Microsoft Business Applications MVP. Feel free to check out my blog at d365goddess.com. Follow me on Twitter at d365goddess, or just connect with me on LinkedIn by scanning the QR code. So I've actually written an article about how to do this setup, and that was prior to the automatic record creation and update rules where that logic moves to Power Automate. So there's a little bit of a different setup now, but I wanted to just go through everything so that it's more clear. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a mailbox in Microsoft 365. Then I'm going to create a queue in Dynamics 365 and use that email address of that mailbox that we created in a previous step. Then I'm going to configure that mailbox in Dynamics 365. And then I'm going to create and configure some automatic record creation and update rules. And then we'll update the Power Automate flow that is part of the automatic record creation and update rules. So there's a whole bunch of stuff to go through. So let's get started. So if you're not sure what this is about, this is really allowing us to set up and configure a support mailbox in exchange where customers can send their emails to if they have an issue that needs to be resolved. We can then use the automatic record creation and update rules to configure the logic to create a case record for that email that just came in. Now, like I said before, I've set this up earlier before right those the the 2020 release wave 2 came in and there were some issues there i could not get it to work but now after the 2020 release wave 2 has been enabled you can now very easily do that so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to show you where you can go ahead and create that mailbox so you're going to go here to admin.microsoft.com and you're going to expand groups that you see over here. And then you see here shared mailboxes. So in order to add a shared mailbox, obviously you just have to go ahead and click here to add sh shared mailbox. You see here that I have it already, but I'm just going to show you how to do that. So you can put in a name for this support mailbox two, and then you're just going to put the email address in there and then you're just gonna go ahead and save your changes. Now, you can see here that I can actually add members to my shared mailbox as well. I can manage the details, I can do all sorts of stuff, but what I did here in this mailbox that I have configured, you can see here that all of my permissions, you can see here who the members are. I'm actually a person uh, that's a member of this particular mailbox so that I can respond to email messages and stuff like that as well. But you obviously don't have to respond from that mailbox. These are just some options that you have here. So you can see here, this is my email address, support at whatever.com.onmicrosoft.com. So this is gonna just be your support email address. I'm just gonna go ahead and close out of that. So that's how easy it is to set up the mailbox. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a queue in Dynamics 365 and we're going to use the email address. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. Copy. Yep. I don't need to see you. Let's go into Dynamics now. So we want to go into the customer service hub. Here we go. So, so we're just going to navigate here to service management and then you can see your queues right over here. So you can see I already set up one. So very easy to do that, right? You just click here on new. You're just going to put a name in there, what type it is, right? Is this a public or a private type of queue? And then you're just going to go ahead and put that email address right over here. And then you can just go ahead and save that. Now I've already set it up. So I'm just going to show you what I did here, right? You can see my email address, 
whether or not it's public or if it's private, right? That really depends on um, if you want people, everybody to have access to it, right? Public or if you want it to be private, obviously. And if it's private, obviously you need to add people um, to that particular queue as well. And then what we're going to do is we are going to, it says here, record creation and update rules. So this is normally obviously blank, right? There's nothing in here. Um, but we're going to talk about this a little bit later. So we have now set up the queue. We have put the email address in there. So the next thing that we want to do is we actually want to configure the mailbox in Dynamics 365 because what it actually does is it will create a mailbox, as you can see here, my support mailbox, but I have to now actually uh, turn that on, so to speak. Now, in order to get to the mailboxes, you can do that a couple of different ways. You can go here to advanced settings. And when you click that, you will see here that the business management tab here opens up in settings. I can go here to email configuration and I can get to my mailboxes from here. And then what you want to do is you want to actually go to that support email box, right? You want to open that. I just give it a second here. And then you want to approve the email and then you want to test and apply or enable, I should say, that inbox and then that mailbox, sorry. And then you can see here that it now shows as success. You have to be sure though, you got to make sure that you set this to server side synchronization or email router, both of those, right? And then you can approve and test and enable that mailbox. The other way to get here is you can actually go to admin.powerplatform.microsoft.com. Then you can click here on environments. And this is my release wave two enabled environment. So I'm going to click on that. Then you see settings here on the top. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. And then you see here email settings, right? Here are my mailboxes. So that's another way of how you can get there. And here again, we can see that same list, right? You can open that, you can access that, and then you can make sure that all of those, uh, the test statuses are all done. Okay, so that was easy enough. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to create and configure those automatic record creation and update roles. It's a whole mouthful, but I'm going to go back to the queue that we were in previously. So here is where you're going to just go ahead and say, we're going to do a new record creation and update rule record, right? So you're just going to go ahead and click on that. And then let me just actually open up. I already have one here. And this is what you're going to fill out. So you can call this whatever you want, right? I just call this, this is my new case update rule. The queue to monitor it is this is where you tie this back to that queue. You can see that it was automatic, automatically populated if you create it from within the queue, obviously. And then what do we want? What activity type do we want to monitor? We want to make sure that we're actually monitoring those emails that are flowing in. Now, there are some additional configurations here if you can go to that advanced tab. So for example, allowing emails from unknown sender. So what that means is that if an email is received from an email address that is not in our database, then you can configure Dynamics 365 to automatically create a contact record using that email address. And then it will use that new created record as the contact related to the case when it gets created. So when you have this field set to yes, you can see that this manage unknown senders by field now pops up. If I have this to no, you can see that that field disappears. So what you can do here is you can, as you can see, map it in power automate manually, which I'm not going to do because I want, want a system to just create that contact. And then right. What, what I said previously, it's then going to use that contact as the customer on that case. And then the next one is require a valid entitlement on the connected case. So if you only want the system to automatically create cases for customers that have a valid and active entitlement, then you want to set this to yes. I'm going to create a case regardless. So I'm going to set this to no. Then you have here, wait for a specific amount of time 
after the connected case and you can hover your mouse over this as well after it's been resolved so right here's where you're going to choose whether an item related to a resolved case should be converted into a new case so again you can set this to no and then you see that that other field with the time actually disappears now again what this amount of time means you kind of have to understand that dynamics 365 only creates a new case after the selected time has passed after case resolution so for example if you're gonna have to if you have this set if you have this set to one day and a case exists when a mail comes in for the same issue another case will not be created until one day lapses after that existing case has been resolved so keep that in mind and then you can see here there is a activity monitoring stuff going on as well with this particular rule right so i can go into this rule and kind of monitor that as well so once you're done with this then you need to go ahead and obviously right put in the conditions to evaluate just like it says here what you want the system to do right so i'm just going to go ahead and click on that and you've seen this all before if you've worked with slas you see something similar right so these are some of the conditions now what i said earlier right i want a case created every time an email address an email goes in there but it will not create an email right or it will not create a case sorry based on the logic that i went over earlier right it will just associate that email with that already existing case so here are your conditions that you can put in right if this the, and that if this right you can add rows groups and related entities to here as well so again i just said right i i'm, I'm not going to do that so what i'm seeing here is the record that you want to create obviously we want to create a case right but this is a drop down of entities in dynamics 365 i'm just going to go ahead and create a case whenever that email comes in now here's the difference right now we are actually configuring this logic in power automate so i'm just going to go ahead and click on that and i'm just going to give it a second here and as you can see it will load my flow that's now related to this rule so i call it the same thing as i call the rule might be a good thing might be a little bit easier to find some of these flows as well and to define them if you're working in power automate but I'm just going to go ahead and show you. So a lot of this stuff, I don't have to do anything. This is just created automatically. And what this is going to do is it's going to determine whether or not the person who sent the email is a contact or an account. And if I click on this, this logic, like I said, was already in there. I didn't have to do anything. If the email sender is a contact that does not have a, an account linked to it, then it's going to create a case just for that contact. If the sender is a contact that does have a related account, it's going to create a case for the account record and it's actually going to put the contact in the contact field. So just to go over that again, so there's a couple of different scenarios here, right? When an email comes in from somebody whose email address does not exist in our system, the system is first going to create a contact record using that email address and then it's going to create a case and associate those together the customer id field on the case will have that contact record populated now the second scenario right if we have an email that comes in from a contact with no related account record then the case that gets created will have the contact populated in that same customer id field on the case record Third scenario, when an email comes in from the contact that does have a related account, then the case that gets created will have the account record populated in the case's customer ID field, and the contact is populated in the case's primary contact ID field. So there's nothing you have to do here. Now, the only thing, right, that I really want to highlight, you already see here, create record, do not rename this step. So the only thing that you might want to do 
is update some of these items here in this case create creation step, right? So for example, you might have, you can see here, I actually have a subcategory, which is a custom field that I have that I just want to hard code, right? So you can do that directly on here. You can also, for example, say, right, where is this coming from? What's the origin? You can set this to email, or maybe you have another value that you added here yourself. You want to say support email box, right? So you can do that as well. That's really the only thing that you have to do. So let's now go back here to my record creation rule, right? We just talked about this. Let's just go ahead and close this. And lastly, do you want additional things to happen? Like for example, automatically reply to that email. I have this set to no, but you can set it to yes. And then you can actually select an email template that you send to those emails that are coming in. Now that's really all you have to do after you're done with all of that. You just need to make sure that it's actually activated that particular rule. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to send an email to this mailbox. I actually am now in the Gmail account of Angel. Let me just go ahead and hit compose here. You can see that this is Angel. And let me just go back here. And let me go back and let me actually search for Angel. And here he is. This is his email address. So you're going to be able to see that Angel is actually related to this a datum account. Oh, let's scroll down here. So what should happen as soon as I actually send an email to that mailbox, it should create a case and relate that to a datum corporation and put Angel on there as the contact. So let's just go ahead and test that out real quick. Here we go. Subjects. I have an issue with something and then we can put some stuff in here. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and send that. Now this is just going to go ahead and take a few minutes. So let's open up that support mailbox. I am a member of that. I, oops, I have access to that. So I'm just going to go ahead and click open. And here we can see that that email actually came in. So let's just give in a couple of minutes here. And in the meantime, let us pull up an advanced fine. You can see here that these are all of the email messages that were created today. So let's take a look. Oh, and here it is already. So you can see here that the email came in and you can now also see that the case actually has been created. So let's take a look at that. And here it is. It did exactly what we wanted it to do. It found actually that it had a customer, a datum corporation, and the contact was Angel. And then here we have his email that is now associated to the case. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit that like button again and be sure to check back again next week for yet another video. Stay safe, everybody. Have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.